many are here to learn something today? We covered this Sunday, I am a learner, and you grow spiritually when you learn. And there's no limit, there's no limit to your life, but the limit of your learning. That means your relationships can get better if you learn how to have better relationships. Your, your career can become better if you become more educated. And so any area that you want to improve in, you need some knowledge in, especially spiritual knowledge. Your emotions can become better when you understand the promises of God. Most people are dealing, most people are dealing with the, the depression, fear, anxiety, most people. And the reason is they don't know how to fight it. All they're saying is, man, I see my problems. I see my difficulties. I see my struggle. I'm going through this painful situation and I don't see a way out. A purpose of a teaching like tonight is to give you spiritual vision. Yeah, that means you, when you have vision, you know, there was a, a lady named Helen Keller. She was blind. And she says, what's worse than being physically blind is being spiritually blind. That means when you have no hope, you're spiritually blind. And maybe you're in this room and you're a little hopeless and you're, there are a lot of hopeless and, and you're trying to find hope in people, in your circumstance, if they would change or that would change, that would sure make me happy. If I got a better report from the doctor, that would get my hopes up. But what God wants you to do is learn this, that you could actually get your hopes up in his promises. Because his promises are greater than the facts you're dealing with. Jesus can turn, come on, Jesus can turn your, come on, those situations that look hopeless around. And, and so we're here to build our faith. Someone say faith. faith. Faith is a confidence. It's confidence. Say it with me, confidence. confidence. That what you're hoping for is actually going to happen. And this, this is what we're going to, you got to get ready for this. Get ready to get a vision, a hope vision. And then let God give you some faith that that's actually going to happen. And, and this is the idea. How can you be depressed if you believe your best days are still ahead of you? How can you be depressed if victory's in your future? How can you be depressed, come on, if, it, if heaven's your final destination? How can you be depressed if you know that through Christ you're more than a conqueror? Come on. How can you be depressed if you know your God's a provider? How can you be depressed, come on, if God's a restorer? But this idea of faith comes by hearing. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Build your faith. And, and we're not just building our faith for ourselves. We're building our faith for other people. We're running into a lot of people that are hurting, broken, lonely, and they really don't know how to get out of it. Your job is to get this faith and then give it to somebody else. Come on, encourage someone, build someone, and you're gonna be the most, you're gonna be, you're gonna be the most satisfied when you become a world changer, a person. Come on, you could change an atmosphere. Come on, you could change emotions. You could, you could clear demons out of a room because demons come with lies. And you can say, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. Devil, get out your lying spirit. Amen? So you don't need to be scared of demons because demons, this is what they, they run from truth. What do demons run from? So when you know the truth, the devil can't stay. He only stays when he's lying to you and you're repeating his lies. You're nobody. You're nothing. It's never going to be good. It's always the same struggle. You're never going to get out of it. You're a, you're a drug addict. You're a drunk. You're a failure. You're, you're a loser. And you start agreeing with that, he stays. But there's going to be a time in your life that you get so much word in you that you're going to say, nah, I used to be a failure. I used to, come on, I used to be losing. But I'm no longer a loser. I'm serving the king of kings. The creator of the universe, he's, if he's for me, who could be against him? Come on, I dare any devil come against me because there's light in me. And when there's light, darkness flees. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. Come on, is there anybody here ready to do some spiritual warfare? And understand this, spiritual warfare is quoting the Bible. That when the devil comes with lies, he wins when you repeat his nonsense. You win when you repeat the scripture. Come on, is there anybody ready to get some breakthrough in your life? 
Depression? What depression? The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to claim, I'm going to claim my inheritance. Jesus didn't die and resurrect to keep me depressed. I know the doctors told you are depressed, but Jesus says, come on, I've set you free from that and I'm giving you my joy. There has to be a day that you say, I'm no longer addicted because who the sun sets free is free indeed. Does anybody want some freedom tonight? Come on, a turn around. But I love this. You get a turnaround and then you start giving turnarounds. I love that. You need a breakthrough? Come see me. You used to be a drug dealer, now you're a hope dealer. I always say, come on, I got some stuff for you, man. I got some hope. I got some freedom. You could bring that. Come on, let me know you could bring that to your job site. You could bring that to your family. You could. What are they going to say? You're weird. No, I'm happy. You're high. Yeah, on Jesus. How many know the difference? Come on. Come on. You got to get this. Get it through the Word. So, tonight, I'm glad you're here. Have you already just saying the Scriptures? Can you feel atmosphere shifting? Come on, could you see your mind shifting? I don't care what you're going through. Jesus already conquered it. Why don't you go ahead and claim your victory instead of claiming your past? Why is your identity tied to your failure and your identity is not tied to your King, your Lord, your Savior? Give God just one more praise. Come on, online. Give some praise in your living room. There has to be a time that you just go ahead and get your body in motion. Your emotions might not be there yet, right, quite yet, but there has to be a time that you get a posture. Right now, my emotions aren't there, but my body's gonna get there. I'm gonna start clapping right now, shouting right now, praising right now. Things will get in, come on, things will get in line. You know, do you know you could do that? And once in a while, you just gotta smile when you feel like, you feel depressed? Just be crazy. Like the Joker, just. There's times you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, we're going to have a good day today. Look yourself. We're going to, you hear me? You, you look yourself in the mirror. You hear me, Marco? We're going to have a good day today. It's going to be a great day. God's for us. Expect some blessing today, Marco. Come on, God has a blessing for you tonight. Come on, expect something tonight. That's the way I look at it. That's the way I look at it. How do you look at it? Because your perspective determines, come on, what you're going to receive tonight. Well, let's see what happens. It's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. But somebody has to say right now, I'm going to get something next 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to get a breakthrough. Matter of fact, I'm getting it right now. Do you know there's someone here that's addicted? And you know what the craziest thing? Freedom's in this room. Why would you leave with your addiction? It's messing your body up. It's costing you a lot of money. It's messing up, it's messing your family up. It's messing your mind up. And tonight God is saying, I got some keys to unlock some chains. Does anybody want to be unlocked tonight? Why not? What did Jesus say? Come on, I'm going to heal somebody tonight. I know they said, come on, I know they said that sexual, sexual transmitted disease, you deserve it and you earned it, but God says, I paid for that too on the cross by your stripes I'm healed. How about getting a healing tonight? How about getting salvation tonight? How about getting a breakthrough? One more. Come on, give God just one more praise. Hey. All right. We got some good stuff happening. We have, uh, I just want to mention the marriage challenge, 30 days. We're going we're gonna to have you focus on working on 30 days on becoming better at relationships. So we're challenging singles and married couples committed for 30 days with homework, with a commitment, with some instructions so you can learn how to have healthier relationships. I know this. When your relationships are healthy, you're happier. How many want to be have a, start having a happier life? Relationships are key. So sign up. Make sure you do that. Memberships on Sunday. But we have our, our special uh, pastor coming out from all the way from Kenya. 
He's our Kenya pastor. Brian, uh, he, it, it, the crazy thing about Brian is that he was given to, his mother gave him up to this orphanage. This is where he grew up in the orphanage. He never knew, and his mom never knew, that when she sent him to the orphanage, he would not only be there his whole life, but after that, he would become a pastor and lead the orphanage. So right now, he's 33 years old, and he's dedicated his whole life to little babies, little boys, little girls. They built, we built a school, come on, partnered up with him, a junior high elementary school. We clothe, come on, we clothe those kids, we feed those kids, and we support Brian out there. Come on, he's in the nitty gritty, in a third world country, fighting for, for little babies, little boys. We're rescuing prostitutes off the street. We got a, come on, we got a home for prostitutes to get off the streets. We got a home for babies. Come on, little babies are being dropped off. I thank God that we're all part of this. And now he's coming all the way from Kenya. He's going back in, I think, one or two days. But he's here tonight, and he's gonna, just going to remind us about what it means to follow Jesus. But also, I want you to understand this. What are the benefits of following? What are the rewards or what are the results of following Jesus? So I want you to focus, pay attention. Are you ready to learn tonight? Let's get, let's get Brian a way where I'll always welcome. Come on, he's one of our pastors. He's one of our brothers. He's over there in the battle. We sent him finances, but he's fighting it every day. Come on, let him know you're happy to hear a word from God. And remember, remember, pay close attention. He's from Kenya. Okay, so like, well, I don't understand everything. Don't worry about it. You got to pay attention. We're going to practice on Sunday, and he has a word for us. You guys ready for a word? God bless you guys. You guys got it? You got it? He was worried about this. There we go. There we go. All right. Perfect. Hallelujah. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word is able to transform not just emotions. Emotions is too little, but it's able to transform our hearts and speak destiny to us today. When we listen to your word, Lord, you say that your word is light. So today we come humbled so that we can receive light for destiny because their destiny is here, Lord. And when they hear this word, Lord, they're going to be provoked to the next level. And we know the devil doesn't want us to get that. But we are not unaware of his schemes. But we know him because we have you in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Marco. I really appreciate you. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to, to give me a time to be able to minister to the people who are seated here on a Wednesday. And I realized it was very cold today. <laughs> it was very cold. I struggled. And I said, God, did I sign for this? <laughs> and then somebody was joking with me and he said, it's going to snow. Like, <laughs> so I said, I'm ready to go back home. <laughs> Why don't we appreciate our Pastor Marco is in the house today and we appreciate him. You know, sometimes we take for granted what we have. I've sat with Pastor Marco for some time, and every time you sit with this man of God, you must have a book and a paper. Because every word that he's speaking, you want to write it down. Every download he gives, you want to write it down. So we really appreciate you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You can help me appreciate him. Uh, together with... Uh, yeah, together with our beloved Mama Lisa, I know she's not here, but uh, I just love her because uh, my life, I've seen the power and the zeal, the tenacious zeal of women when it comes to a place of protection, when it comes to a place of 
protecting what belongs to them and keeping the vision going on. I remember at a time, there was a day in my life I was arrested one day, and uh, it wasn't good because people were going to come and take over the orphanage, so they got us arrested. So when I was arrested here, pastors came. Many people came, the people around town who knew me, they all came, but they started leaving one by one. But there was only one woman who stayed there. And I understood that's why even when Jesus was crucified, there was only one woman who stayed. Her name was Mary. And this woman stayed and she said to the police commander, I know this is a big mistake you're making, but I'm not going to leave your office. You're going to lock me in your office. I'm giving you two decisions. Is either I go home with him or I'm not going home. So... I just wanted to remember Mama Lisa for that. I know she has, <laughs> she's been a mother and she has sacrificed a lot. And that's the reason why we are seated here. So I do not take that for granted. And all the mothers in the house, I really appreciate you. My heart goes to you because of the sacrifices that you gave. I am Pastor Mungasi Brian, all the way from Kenya. And we have the Way World Outreach in Kenya too, in Africa. And it's growing. And we are growing just to the same DNA, with the same DNA, touching souls, making disciples who make disciples. And the funny thing, we started during COVID. <laughs> so when other churches were closing down, the way was opening more churches. And from all the things that you've helped us to do, I came here when I was giving up. I shared that story, and at that night, I had stayed in the United States of America for about three months. And on this night, just four days before I leave America, I said, God, this was my prayer that night. I said, God, you know, I have tried everything I can. I have knocked on every door I can. And I have also listened to you as keen as I can. But this is not working. That was my one-minute prayer. And I told God, this is not working. What we are going to do, we are going to close that orphanage and release those kids. And then God said, now, because you've reached your end, I want to start. And you can see how we have started. And right now, in Kenya, we have a children's home going, two facilities. We have a women's home going. We have a children's and teens mom going. All this because of what God is doing through you guys. So my heart goes out to you for everything that you are doing. Tonight, I just want to touch on I am a follower. I am a follower. And... This is from the book of Mark, if we got our devotional books. I remember there was a challenge, we should come with them. But if we got our devotional books, if you are reading today, you realize that there was a time that Jesus had just fed these 5,000 people. And when he fed these 1,000 people, 5,000 people, people started following him. People started following him. You can imagine if you are 12 people chosen to follow this let me say, that time Jesus, because of the miracle, he was a kind of a celebrity. People were trying to associate with him. And then everyone was trying to follow him. But then he realized, if I allow them to follow me without knowledge, if I allow them to follow me without understanding what following means, they are going to lose it. So he decides to protect them. And he gives us Mark chapter 8 verse 34. Then, calling the crowd to join his disciples. Isn't it funny that he calls the crowd to come and join his disciples? I don't know what was the feeling of the disciples. Maybe they thought we are too many. We don't want many people to come. But I thank God because he will always have room for more people to come and follow him. That's why he's always calling for you to come. He's always calling for other generations to come. This kingdom can never be full. He will still call. But then he said, if any of you, now he gives conditions. He says, I invite all of you to come, 
But we are going to work on a structure here. He says, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. Now, there are people in our generations that we are following God because of what he has to give. We are following God because we heard he did this and that and that. Well, that is good because of the testimony. But when he calls, he wants you to have results. And if you are going to follow him because of what he gives, you are going to miss on the results. So he says, I want to teach you so that when you are following me, you can gain these results. It can work for you. It will be easier for you. Because if you follow me because of bread, tomorrow there's not going to be bread. And you're going to give up. If you follow me because I give, there are days that I'm not going to give. And because the function of your following was based on provision, now because there is no provision, you're going to leave me. And so he says, I'm going to show you. And so tonight we just want to follow and delve deeper into the three results of being a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, he, he wants your following to be informed because when it is informed, you are going to bear fruits. You are going to bear fruit. So it's a guarantee it is going to happen. And so he says, the number one result that you will get is transformation. Is that your life will be transformed. It will be transformed if you follow. Jesus calls us to life. He calls us, there is life that I have given you. But then again, despite of me giving you life, there is life that I want you to give me. It is a trade taking place. I'm giving you life in exchange for your life. So when we receive Christ, we do not stop there. But there is another step that we take. Now, if you follow him because of bread, you are following him because of what he can give. But he says, I want to make you. I want you to become. Is, why does he want us to become? It's because it is only when we become that we are able to extend the kingdom. We can never extend the kingdom until we become. We cannot operate as he operates until we become. So that's why he's very, he's very categorical. He says, I want you to follow me, but as you follow me, I want you to operate in some given dimensions. I want you to operate in some given authorities that are bestowed upon you, but you are going to be effective in this area if you become. That's why he's saying, if you follow me, you must become. And that is the word disciple. We got it in, in Greek, it says disciples. It means a devotee, a disciple, one who gives all his attention and loyalty to. Now, I watched Super Bowl when I was here. I got introduced to American football when I was here. I didn't know the, that league and all those things. But I looked and then I was able to associate with what we follow in Kenya. Kenya, we follow a lot of Premier League and I was challenging the people that we were with that we know some of your team members in American football. American football, the ladies team has got a very good team. But yet most people don't know, you see? Yeah, they don't know. They're like, uh. <laughs> they really don't know. So I realized, just think of it, loyalty. Sometimes just ask yourself, are you more loyal to your team more than you are to Jesus? People will do anything for their team, but are you able to sacrifice and do anything for Jesus? So when you follow, it means you have denied. You have denied yourself. And that's why he says we get transformation through self-denial. Self-denial. 
And I was talking to Pastor Marco today, and he's got a lot of wisdom. And I was telling them, you know, when you hear this self-denial, that word, we always relate that word to sin. But sometimes it might not be sin. It might be the right thing, but towards self. You might be headed towards the right thing, but all you are thinking is self. But God, God says, even you can deny the right thing so that you can come and make other people be followers. I remember one time at the orphanage when I was young, and um, I had just grown around 17, 18, and before then we really had, we were into bad leadership. And the first thing I did during my time, I tried to talk about the bad leadership. So I, I went to this guy in authority and I said, man, what is happening is bad. You are taking advantage of these ladies and it's not good. And he told me, shut up or we'll get away with you. So I had to shut up. I finished my high school. But that thing was still inside of me. I would look at these girls and say, man, this is not right. Then, one night, I got an, on an email and I said, God, I'm going to take another step, which is to expose what is happening. But I understood the consequences of that. So when I did that, I exposed what was happening in this orphanage. The following week, the person I wrote to, wrote back, and he forwarded that message to this person I was talking about. And so when this person got it, he said, we are doing away with you. You have to go. And I ended up in the slums for speaking the truth. So when you are a follower, there are some steps that you will take. There are some decisions that you will have to make that will not benefit you, but they will lead you to the wilderness. They will take you to the wilderness. They will not... Jesus, look at Jesus as our model person. Jesus goes beyond emotions. And he says, even fulfilling God's will as a follower, I'm going to go to the cross. It meant that cross was his only way. So he denied his life. Man, there is nothing that we can deny that can compare to that cross. <laughs> Whatever things we deny ourselves, they are very little. They are menial compared to what was on the cross. Compared to the pain, what he asks us to sacrifice is little. What he asks us to deny ourselves cannot be compared to that. But even Paul says that forsaking the present pleasures, because I look forward to what I'm going to gain, is much more than what I'm sacrificing right now. It's much more. So he says, if you want, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross and follow me. Now, we should be very careful that we are not following him without taking up the cross. We have to be very careful. We might follow him, but we don't have the cross. What do you feel you lost? Because when you carry the cross, you will feel the pain. When you carry the cross, you will feel you are holding on something. And if you are operating in a place like you feel there is nothing that is bothering you, sometimes you'll have to leave those gang members. Sometimes you'll have to leave that phone and say, at this time to this time, Phone, I'm putting you aside. I'm carrying the cross for now because the purpose is greater than what I have. And it goes like that because there is something that must give you pain when you carry the cross. But that pain, what, what will make you go on is when you realize that the gain is greater than the present pain. It is to make you to become. Because God has to transform you from a place of where you are just waiting to receive to his dimension where you are able to give and operate to in a level where he is. 
We also get transformation through sacrifice. And I love this scripture in Hebrews 11, 24, 25. The Bible says, it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And just listen to this. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasure of sin. Fleeting pleasure of sin. This man chose power over pleasure. He chose to become. He said, I am choosing to leave the palace. And I know it's going to cost me. It is going to cost me. It is going to cost everything that I have. It's going to cost my name. It's going to cost me because think of this transfer. You are coming from the palace and here you are hanging out with slaves. You are not even hanging out with Egyptians. You are hanging out with slaves. That is what sacrifice does. And sometimes sacrifice will always take you out of the comfort zones and bring you to a place where you are considered as a nobody. But because of what you are looking towards, because of the process that is making you, whatever happens doesn't bother you. Whatever takes place does not bother you. It does not speak to you because your attention is where God is taking you. And God is waiting for you to become. When you are a follower, he's waiting for you to become. Now, there are some dimensions that God is going to kill. There are, some, there are some characters that God is going to kill. That's why he says that those that wait upon the Lord shall be strong and they shall mount up on wings like eagles. And now, that word to wait upon him, that is the time where you are being conformed. That is the time where you are being taken to another level, that God is really working in you to make sure that you change, to make sure that you move. I remember one day uh, when I was in campus, I received, I received a call to come to, to Kentucky here and where the revival is taking place, I saw that campus. I was called to that campus in, two, in 2012. And I had my papers, I was signing and everything to come. Now, coming to the US for a Kenyan is like winning a lottery. How to explain that? It's like winning a lottery, coming to this land. It's like winning a lottery. So when I was preparing that and finishing my last papers and doing everything, I received a call from the orphanage. And the call said, would you come back and help? And I said, no. <laughs> you know, that is, that is the time you rebuke the enemy speaking to the other person. And my prayer that night was to rebuke that voice that was speaking at that time. Because the voice that will call you to deny yourself is not always a comfortable voice. It doesn't speak to your emotions. It doesn't make you happy. It doesn't appeal to you. That's why the enemy comes in very beautiful things because they're appealing. But the pleasure is short-lived. But when God is calling you for something, that voice that calls you, you don't want to relate to it. And so I had this call and I said, God, this is not happening. Then I thought about it. The second day they called. The third day they called. I just want to be sincere with you. I did not go because, <laughs> because I wanted to. I went because I didn't want to disappoint someone. But either way, I went. And God was actually taking time 
to chasten me, to make sure that he's pruning, he's digging inside just to make sure that I am ready because according to my timetable, I was ready, but according to God's move, according to, the, to God's understanding, I was not yet ready. He still had to work in me. He still had to move in me. So there are some situations that happen in life and you feel like God has denied you an opportunity. You feel like everyone is going. Everyone is moving. Everyone is taking this step. But me, no. That's why he says wait. Don't look upon the people who are moving. Don't be worried with the people who are taking the next step. In self-denial, he will always say wait. He will say, wait. And because when you wait, if you read the Bible, it says that when Elijah saw the clouds come, he told King Ahab, you better go. And King Ahab rode on the king's chariots, and he left. But Elijah waited on the Lord. And the Bible says that after he waited on the Lord, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And when the hand of the Lord came upon him, he was able to reach Jezreel before Ahab reached there. So it is when God asks you to deny yourself something, when God asks you to deny yourself some pleasures, it is for your good. It is for your benefit. It is for your speed. It is for you to operate in a heavenly atmosphere. Because he understands you. He says that, I know you are of little strength. I have seen your works. I have opened an open door before you that no one can shut. But I know you are of little strength. So I don't want you to go in your strength, but I want you to deny whatever is holding you so that you can get my strength and you can be able to operate. So that's why as a follower, you will be taught the school of denial. The school of denial. He will teach you. Number two, the benefit of being a follower is that there is supernatural provision. Supernatural provision. Back to our text in Mark chapter 8 verse 16. The Bible says, and this they began to argue with each other because they hadn't brought bread. Jesus knew that they were saying so. He said, why are you arguing about having no bread? Don't you know or understand yet? Are your hearts too hard to take in? These are very serious questions. You have eyes, can't you see? You have ears, can't you hear? Don't you remember anything at all when I fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread? How many baskets of leftovers? Did you pick afterward? Wow. Those are many questions. And you'll ask whenever somebody asks you a question, they want to take you back or they want you to give an answer. And so these people are with the same Jesus that had fed the five thousand and they are limiting his ability to be able to feed the twelve apostles. So he, he, he has to be sincere with them and tell them, don't you remember I did this? And sometimes that's why the Bible says that they overcame the enemy by the word of their testimony. It's because when you testify, you are able to go to what God did. And he's saying that whatever you are going through right now, don't you remember I am the one who did that? And so I am also able to do this because I am the same God. He never changes. He never changes. He will never change. And he's still doing it right now. You know, I sit in your restaurant and one of the hardest things I have when I visit here is getting to pick what I'm going to eat on the menu. Your menus are complicated. I look at them and I'm like, uh, what am I going to pick? Then you then they always have different choices for one specific thing, but made in a hundred different ways. And you have to pick this one thing. I'm like, I just want chicken. 
given all, all these things and all I want is chicken. You know, in Kenya we know I just want chicken. <laughs> Marinated, done what all those words you use. I'm like, isn't it chicken we are eating? I just want chicken. So we get to be very specific. And I'm looking at this, that Jesus, the way God loves you in this country, the way God has put all avenues, all resources, all that you could ever ask for, anything in this country, whatever you do, anything is at your disposal. Everything that you need, it is at your disposal. I was sharing with a team here and I was telling them there was a hotel that was opened in Kenya and they were only looking for 22 people to come and work. On that interview, they required you to have a degree. And on the day of interview, 2,000 people showed up. They had to cancel that interview. And God is saying, can't you see all this provision that is ahead of you? Can't you see all that I have released because of you? There's just someone who is crying to have what you have, but he has already provided. So one of the benefits of being a follower is that you get to experience God's supernatural provision upon your life. Supernatural provision. Supernatural and now, I got that in my life when we were still being supported by the people and the couple from Ohio. I had, when I came into leadership, I will always just write the needs. You just write the needs and you expect a check to come. You just write the needs and you expect a check to come. Now, God had to teach me a hard way. The provision came to a standstill. And there was no more provision. And I remember taking jobs, taking manual jobs to see how in the evening you're going to come up with food. And then God taught me something. He said, you know what? It's because you had taken your eyes off me and you had put your eyes to this person. And so your attention has shifted. So during this season, I'm going to close every door and remind you that I am the one who provides. I am the one who gives. I am the one who sustains you at every level of your life. And so when he did that, I learned where the mountain is. I learned where the mountain is. I was sharing with Pastor Marco, you go to those mountains, on, on that mountain and you meet people there and somebody has been there for 27 days seeking the Lord. I learned where people seek the Lord. I learned to close my door and look unto him who is my provision. Because sometimes the job might be gone. The channel of income might be gone. Everything that used to make you prosper might have gone. But because of the place you sacrifice, he says that he will never leave you, he will never abandon you, he still there for you. So his channel never runs dry. He never runs dry. And then one thing I learned in that prayer is that when I go to prayer, when I go, now, this is the reason why the enemy is fighting prayer in your life. It's because when you ascend in prayer, you get answers. I don't have time to give you about or take you through the British class of the monarch and how, they, how the king is viewed. But when God gives an answer about provision or anything, when you are working with that answer here, it becomes a law because it is a word from the king. So that's why the devil doesn't want you to keep on transforming each and everything because when he gives an answer and you are coming back with that answer, it is a law. And everything will have to obey it. The economy will have to obey it. The circumstances will have to obey it. Any political party that is in power will have to obey it. Because what you are carrying is not just an answer, but it is a law that can transform anything that was supposed to work against you to work for you. So, Jesus is just trying to remind him. And possibly there is someone here today that you think every channel 
has been taken off. And possibly it was taken off because of the right decisions that you make. <coughs> Maybe that person, because you said no to some things, they're not calling you anymore. Because you said no to sin, people have disconnected themselves to you. Jesus says, because you have become. Now, I want you to operate in my dimension of provision. Because I am still here and I will be here. The last part or benefit of being a follower is that we get to be empowered to fulfill the purpose. We are empowered to fulfill the purpose. Mark chapter 8 verse 6, the Bible says, So Jesus told all the people to sit on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. He gave them to his disciples who distributed the bread to the crowd. A few small fish were found too. Jesus also blessed this and told the disciples to distribute them. This is taking place when the disciples think they don't have an answer. One benefit of being a disciple is that you are taken through faces and there are some faces where you seem to have no answer. There are some faces where you seem to have no provision. But God says, I have elevated you to a point because you have been my follower, because you have been my follower all these days. Now, the benefit that I'm going to give you, and then I looked at the statistics of believers in the USA and all over the world, I realized there is one wrong thing with that statistics. There's one wrong thing. They don't get it. It's because when you are a follower, followers are not counted. Followers are weighed because of what they carry. When we become like Christ, we cannot be counted. But anything that comes against us, it will have to experience our weight. Because we carry, we cannot be counted by numbers. So when we are thinking about the followers and we are limiting ourselves to where we are, we are not just the numbers that we are, but we are the weight. I was reading the, I, I remember watching the videos about our grandmother, I mean to call him grandmother, Pastor Marco's mother. And it's because of her prayers as a follower. So when they were counting people, they would have counted her as one person. But they will not understand that she carried a lot of weight. And we are the people that are sitting here because of that one person that people thought she is a one person. They didn't realize she is carrying the weight. So we can never be counted. And so even in their inability to count us, they are also unable to realize that when we are followers, God is able to use what we think is limited. We are holding loaves. And we are holding just a handful of loaves and two fish. And we want to feed 5,000 people. We want to feed 5,000 people with what we have. We look limited. But then I'm reminded, when David is facing Goliath, when David is facing Goliath, he stands up in that valley and he says, I am going to cut your head today and I'm going to feed it. And now he says, I'm going to cut your head today, but he's not going to use the sling to cut his head. He's not going to use the stone to cut his head. He's not going to go back to Saul and say, Saul, give me your sword so that I can cut. No, he says, he has thinking. And he says, I'm going to take the sword that you have 
and I'm going to use it to cut you. So as disciples, as followers, is that whatever we are holding, God is going to use that. But then there is another advantage that whatever the enemy is holding to fight us, we are going to take it wherever that is not in our hands. We are going to take it wherever that is not at our disposal right now. We are going to use it because we are followers. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter how many clubs they build. It doesn't matter what they are building. We are going to use whatever they are building to counter the kingdom of the enemy. So those are the benefits of being a follower of Christ. Is that we are able to take what the enemy meant for evil and use it for our good. Whatever that was meant to kill us, when we are followers, we are able to get it and turn it around and use it for our good. That's what he says. Will you be my follower? Will you be my follower? Are you able to deny yourself? Are you able to deny yourself? Are you able to live? Because I don't want you to follow me because of bread. I don't want you to follow me because of cars. I don't want you to follow me because of houses. But I want to you to follow me so that you can become. I want, to be an, I want you to be an extension of what I am doing. Because if you get to do what I am doing, it can only happen when you become. Come on, if you receive that word, just give God some praise right now. If you receive that, how many are saying today, I'm a follower? I am a follower. Before anyone else leaves, we're going to make a call tonight. And we're making a call tonight for anyone in here who's saying, I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I want to be willing to give him my everything. What little you may feel like you have, put it in the hands of God tonight. We want to make a call tonight. If you're saying you want to give your heart and your life to Jesus, there's a call right now. Before anyone else leaves, please. The Bible says that we've all fallen short. We've all sinned before God. And the price for sin is death. That means the wages or the price that we owe because we've sinned. We've decided to take our pleasure above God's will in our lives. We owe a price for that. But God, but but Jesus, he loves us so much that he was willing to die and go to the cross for you and I to pay for the price that we owe. Tonight, if you're saying, I want to put my faith in Jesus, I want, to I want to be forgiven of my sins, and I'm ready to repent, which means I'm ready to be a follower of Jesus, to stop following my own way and to follow Jesus tonight. I want to be forgiven of my sin, I want a brand new start. I want to know that if I were to die tonight, that I would be, I would be in heaven for eternity with God forever. If that's you. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand all over this sanctuary and say, I'm ready to follow Jesus. One, two, three. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. I see those two, three hands, four hands. I see five, six, seven hands. Anybody else? You're saying that's me. You're, put your hand up. I see you. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. If you raise your hand tonight, keep your hand up. I see you over there on the side. I see you over here. I see you over here. Anybody else? I see you back there, brother. I see you. This is what I want to do. For those that just raise your hand and for those that have their hands up, I want you to do one more bold step. Would you join us up here in the front? Would you come up here so that we can pray with you and we can congratulate you? Come on, church. Let's give them a round of applause as they're making their way. Even from the back row, they're making their way forward right now. Come on, church. Let's get excited in this moment. Amen. 
there's anyone else you're saying that's me I, I i need to be up there i need i need to be up there now now's the time and don't let anything hold you back in this moment god wants to start a relationship with you and he wants to forgive you of your sin and give you a brand new beginning if you're saying that to me you can come forward and for everyone that just came up i want you to look at me for a second if you came up here tonight just look at me for a quick second we're gonna help you in this walk we're gonna yeah come on man he's excited we're happy we're this is a new beginning for you it's a brand new beginning what we're gonna do we're gonna walk you through this process we're gonna help you there's a class called holy warriors we want just we want to sign you up for this class the person in front of you they're gonna pray with you they're gonna get you signed up and we're gonna help you get started in your walk with God this class launches the first the first week of March we're gonna get you set up to follow Jesus never to turn back to be baptized and to learn how to pray learn how to read your word learn how to be on fire we got you we're here with you come on this is a brand new beginning for you I see that it's a brand new beginning for you let's do it how many are excited for those that are giving their lives to Jesus and saying I'm a follower of Jesus Christ let's bow our heads tonight and let's pray repeat this prayer after me say Jesus thank you for making a way for me you died on the cross and you rose from the dead to defeat my sin and to conquer death you've set me free forgive me now of all of my sin make me a new person thank you for this new relationship that I have with you fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to follow you every day of my life in Jesus name I pray amen and amen and amen come on let's give God praise right now church we love you we love you don't forget that Sunday Pastor Marco is going to be bringing an on fire on time word it's bringing a word this Sunday you can sign up for marriage challenge tonight you can invite people by going to thewayinvite.com let's fill this place up with souls and marriage challenges coming up right around the corner we love you if you need prayer come on up we'd love to pray with you and if you're a young adult in here there's some uh, q a happening this friday this friday night at seven o'clock for young adults it's gonna be an awesome open panel it's gonna be great we love you if we need prayer come on up we'd love to pray with you god bless you